Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn, Psychic Medium. Thank you for joining me today. And I am super excited to have an astrologer on my channel. You guys know I often talk about there's got to be some astrological reason that this is happening. And now I get a chance and you get a chance to figure out maybe what are some of these reasons that some of these things are happening. But the first thing we're going to talk about with Adam Free of Stargazer Astrology. Now, you guys need to check out his channel because he's got a YouTube channel and it's that's it. Um, it's Adam Free. It's um, tell me your YouTube. Yeah. Adam Stargazer Astrology. Uh, so, yeah, it's it, well, it, Adam Stargazing Astrology. So that was super close. Yeah. And, and, and th that also too, that'll also be in the, the description box in the video. So you can just click on the link and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would be excellent. I'm also offering, um, amazing discounts right now for the fall season. So if you're at a crossroads in your life, if you have any astrological questions about your life or anyone else's, please send me an email and the email can be found under the, um, I believe it's the contact section however there will also be an email in the uh, my email in the description box as well i will put his channel and his email in the description box and this is our second video together so mm -hmm. i can tell you guys adam is the real deal so check him out um and i really feel like besides a psychic reading an astrology reading is so good because it, it, these are patterns uh, that end up happening and they can say, look, what was happening in 2014, the same pattern may be repeating itself now. It's just, I find astrology readings to be a very helpful tool. Um, and if Adam is offering a discount, this might be a nice little early holiday gift that you get for yourself. So what we're going to be talking about today is some interesting things that Adam wants to help us understand and know about Putin's astrology, Trump's astrology, and Ukraine's astrology. And then if you'll stick around a little bit more, he's going to talk about all of these six planets that are in retrograde that I promise you are affecting <laughs> you in your personal <laughs> life right now. <laughs> so yeah. it's not going to be a long video. Adam really knows what he's talking about. He's going to give you the 411. But at the end, we're really going to kind of dive into those retrograde planets. So let's get started. Who do you want to start talking about first? Who's, who's astrology? Please listen. All right. All I told right. Adam he has to give us good news. Okay. <laughs> yes. I, I, I actually have really excellent news here. So let's start off with, the, um, with Putin. Step up to the stage. Thank you, Putin, for uh, entering the room and letting us talk about you so intimately. Um, so... So the birth chart for every individual acts as this psychological foundation or the astrological and cosmological blueprint for the psychology of the individual. So the birth chart is that which, which um, constantly stays the same. And I'm going to be talking about what, what's called the transit chart. And those are the planet, the planets that are transiting in relation to the birth chart. And those strike different, um, different psychological aspects that are going on with the individual. So the first thing with Putin I'm going to do is talk about his short-term transits. So these are the ones that are affecting him now in the next couple of weeks. So he has the planet Mars, which represents his energy. It's in a harmonious aspect to his north node, which, which is his karmic direction. So as we see right now, he's you know, he's, he's gathering the troops. He's kind of going full speed ahead with his energy. He's kind of feeling like he's on top of it right now. Um, there's some smooth fluid energy that is, is helping, is helping him formulate ideas for his, um, so-called when, however, <laughs> he has the planet Mercury, which is community, which is, stands for communications. It's an intense aspect to the planet Mars, which is his energy. So there, there's a clash here and there's a miscommunication. As we see, as we see collectively, a lot of people are fleeing the country. They don't want to have anything to do with this. So this is stirring up more anger for him and more rage. The next aspect he has is Venus, which stands for relationships. That's also in a square aspect to Mars as well in his natal, in, or excuse me, in his transit chart. So this is creating a psychological battle. Venus represents people. Venus represents 
finances and resources. Mars represents the soldiers. There's a square aspect. They're not able to meet together harmoniously. So he's energetically clashing. He's frustrated. He's frazzled. And so this is taking a toll on his psychological, mental, and emotional health, which we honestly all like to see. <laughs> so those are some of the short-term transits. His long-term transits do not look good at all. Um, the first aspect he has is the planet Neptune, um, which, which rules, which can can rule illumination, but with him it rules illusion and delusionment because it's in a square aspect, which is a tense aspect to the planet Mars, which represents your energy and vitality. A Mars square Neptune indicates um, health issues, lies, scandals, and deceit. This is one of the least fortunate aspects you can have in a transit. The next aspect he has is the planet Saturn, which represents the Lord of Karma and um, the ever existing structure that he's trying to hold up. It's in a challenging aspect to the planet Jupiter, which represents his faith and his beliefs. He's having a hard time trying to find other people and trying to find the, 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 the other people to give him collective faith in order to move on. So his belief system is being challenged. His traditions and his tr way of um, doing things traditionally is being challenged. So it's making him more and more upset. The next aspect he has is the planet Uranus, which rules volatility. That's in a tense aspect to his north node. His north node is his karmic direction. We're each born with a north node. It's like our true north. You know, if, if, if you've heard of that, um, like fulfilling your, your destiny and your purpose. So Uranus is volatility. It's change. It's, um, it's disruption. It's nervousness. It's excitement. When it's in a square aspect, it means he is going to be acting um, out of a lot of volatile behaviors. He's going to be unpredictable with this aspect. Um, and he, he's also going to, he, he's going to surprise people. Um, there can also be big gains, but also big losses with Uranus. With this aspect, it doesn't look great for him. Um, Cause sitting next to the planet Uranus is um, the planet Jupiter. Whatever sitting next to Jupiter, it magnifies and expands. So this Uranian energy is going to expand, making him like a walking time bomb. Um, with this aspect, there could be uh, um, just th this, this, this aspect is going to challenge his beliefs on a mass level. It's almost like a lightning bolt is going to be kind of like thrown in there. It's going to be expanded. Um, and it's really going to shake him up. This is the aspect of like a 10 point earthquake going on here. Um, this hopefully is really going to like take a negative toll on him. I can't see with these square aspects that energetically and emotionally, it's going to be anything good. Squares are challenges. Squares are tense and squares are dynamic. So what we pretty much have for Putin in the long-term transits is a big shakeup and a big wake-up call on a collective level. Um, that's not going to look so good for him. Wow. And how? what is the timeline on the long-term transits? So the long-term transits is approximately three to six months. Oh, that's good. That's short for me. I'll take it. <laughs> not three to six years it's three to six months yep. yes three, three that six that months. dovetails exactly with what the guides say and so part of it you mentioned was a health potential potential for some sort of health issue um yeah. Yeah. now will yeah. jupiter is jupiter going to have an effect on all of those transiting planets or just the one next to jupiter quote unquote i know that no. might be a really yeah, so so Jupiter is going to have a, a a couple of um. There's going to be a couple of transits gonna that are going to have that uh, that effect. That first one I mentioned was Saturn. So Saturn represents the existing structure he's trying to hold on to. However, Saturn also represents karma, and as we know, karma, the Lord of Karma, is basically inescapable with humanity. It's just how it is. It's how we learn. It's how we grow. The laws of law of cause and effect. Um. So that is in a square aspect to Jupiter, which is his morals and his faith. So his morals are, and his faith and his ability to move forward, it's going to be tested by his existing karma. 
And Jupiter and Saturn, they represent the the planets having to do with the social structure. So because it, they're in a square aspect, that indicates a, a lack of support from the social structures. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yep, that's exactly yeah. what, what I saw. It's so interesting to see how the different modalities, you know, like my spirit guides, the astrology, it all sort of in, in connects and supports each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really tied in there that the whole metaphysical and esoteric realm. It's it's incredible, yes. Yes. incredible, fantastic. So you want to move on to? Yeah, yeah. So let's talk a bit about. Um, let's go to let let's go to Ukraine because you okay. know they're they're you know they're really directly tied into one another. So Ukraine has. Um, First of all, Ukraine's natal chart is is hardcore. These people are kind of like scrappers, so to speak. Um, the first house, which represents the ability to be a trailblazer, is extremely strong in their natal chart. They have, and it's a mix of the astrological signs of a square of, um, excuse me, Capricorn, which stands for. Um, the traditional structures and building upon a traditional foundation and Aquarius, which is all about new innovative ideas, new technology, bringing humanity together on more of the same footing. And the moon sign, which represents their emotional undertone is in Aquarius. It's liberal, it's freedom, it's democratic, it's, it's peace loving, and it's very fixed in opinion. So that also ties in with Zelensky's strong Aquarian energies. So um, basically what we're seeing here is, is, is like the ability to be able to, um, to like, like basically like fight to the death for your land. Putin and Ukraine both have extremely strong and heightened uh, Pluto's in their chart. Pluto represents power. They both have Pluto sitting at the highest point in their chart. So it's this like clashing energy. Um, Putin has Pluto and Leo, which is more about dictatorship. And they have Pluto and Scorpio. So their Plutos are squaring each other. They're at a square off um, in, in their natal charts. So it's like Pluto versus Pluto. So what we know about this is um, Pluto has to do with, with psychological purging of old karma, of ghosts under the bed, of monsters under the bed. So they're squaring off. So this, this act is actually um, pushing the evolution of both countries forward through intense purging, an intense, intense purging process. So it's important to remember that also. Um, so as far as Ukraine's transits, uh, on, on the short term, there are some Chiron aspects. Chiron stands for the wounded healer. So what we are seeing right now is all the oppression of Ukraine, everything is coming up and it's the, the nation is, is having um, the ability to be able to heal. So the first aspect is the sun, which represents the vitality of the nation. It's in a harmonious aspect to Chiron, which is the wounded healer. So, so this right here is the opportunity for healing like even right now because it's it's a current aspect so sure it seems like they're in a lot of tense dynamic right now however healing has already it healing it, like the healing process it's happening like now as as we speak um the planet mercury which is communications it's sitting right next to the planet mars so they're not afraid to reach out they're not afraid of the, they're not afraid to battle. Also, a Mercury-Mars conjunction isn't afraid of the power plays that Putin is spitting out verbally. It's like you're spitting out, you're spitting that out. We're gonna like, we're gonna like fight you. Like we're 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 there with you. We're not gonna cower and we're not is that scared. Social media, like Ukraine using social media and using communication, sort of <laughs> as a warlike, you know, as a tool or a weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that, that yep, that, that, that's definitely an aspect of it. Um, definitely social media, anything having to do with the spoken word, because Mercury's, you know, communications, mentality, 
Mars is energy. Mars is, you know, Mars represents the God of War, you know, and what does the God, of, what does the God of War do? He goes and he fights, you know, he, he goes and he, he, he fights those battles. He, she, whatever, just that energy, you know, that strong energy. The next aspect is Venus, which stands for relationships. That's also sitting next to Mars as well. So that is giving that that extra oomph to, to, to go be out there. And the next aspect is uh, a harmonious aspect with the sun. The sun is trying the natal sun. So again, this is the chance for for vitality and and for uh, for integration and and to be able to um, to really stand on your own two on your own two feet. So those are some of the short-term aspects. Um, and some of these long-term aspects, they they actually, when I was looking through them, they make total sense like intuitively and I will explain them each. Um, so the first long-term aspect is the planet Jupiter. So Jupiter represents morals and it represents faith. It's in a harmonious aspect to Chiron. Chiron is, is the wounded healer. So they have belief and they have faith literally in a higher power. They have collective faith, true collective faith that they're going to get through this and that they're go going to heal from this and that this is part of their healing process. That belief in that faith will literally pull them through. Yeah. Sustain them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next aspect is the planet Pluto, which represents power. It's in a, and it's in a harmonious aspect to Mars. So Pluto and Mars have a lot to do with that dynamic energy and that powerful energy that can that can bring um bring warlike situations and uh, and soldiers and um you know that 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 kind of energy. However, when it's a tr when it's in a trine aspect, they're speaking to one another harmoniously. So this is the ability to be able to, to use their power and their resources to their disposal and to use their energy to their disposal as well in order to be able to move along try i call trines i call those um when i'm doing readings i call trines fifth dimensional aspects because you know we're, we're on here a lot of times operating from from a third dimensional place which can seem so hard and so cold and so rough but a trine aspect it's the, the energy flows harmoniously so it's 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 like a divine gift the next aspect is the planet Saturn, which represents the Lord of Karma, the existing structures. That's in a, a square or a tense aspect to the midheaven. Now, this means a couple of things. Um, like anything else, like any nation, like any individual, right? We're still here. We, we're still working through through karma. So this is this is going. This aspect is going to need a readjustment with the existing structures and with the, with the ex existing foundations. Um, they need to be careful here that, um, that it's, it's going to be a push and pull between um, what do I need to do um, to, to keep these existing structures and how can I move, move ahead? Um, Saturn can sometimes lean towards the over traditional energy. And if they're overly traditional with things, it could hurt them. But if they're too radical, too fast, it could hurt them as well. Um, the next aspect they had is another one of those fifth dimensional aspects. It's the planet Uranus, which represents um, either volatility um, and, and sudden upsets like with Putin. But with them, it's in a trine aspect. So, so Uranus will bring about new ideas and new inventions, and it will bring about change when it's, it's in a harmonious aspect to their North Node. Their North Node stands for their collective evolutionary direction. So change is inevitable for them. Change is going to be much more fluid for them with this long-term aspect. Um, it's also going to be, Uranus is also going to be trying their ascendant. The ascendant is, um, has, has a lot to do with how um, the nation is viewed publicly. So we're just going to see a lot of change with them, a, a lot of fluid fluid change new ideas for things um trines are also support their their inner support and they're also com communal support as well and uranus has a lot to do with 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 community and in implementing new ideas 
Um, and again, that energy of support when it's in a trine. The next aspect, the, the last aspect is the planet Neptune, which represents um, spirituality. It can also represent confusion and illusion. It's in an oppositional aspect to Mars, which represents their energy. So whenever Neptune is in an oppositional or a square aspect, um, we need to be careful energetically that that and um, excuse me, and Ukraine in this case needs to be careful energetically that they don't um, that they like kind of keep themselves together. Neptune can be um, a little lazy sometimes, a little sloppy with a with a square aspect, or a little delusional sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, so so with this aspect, um, there could be a tendency to get a little lax around the edges. This is their most challenging aspect. They have to not call something a win yet, right? They have to stay alert. Um, and they also have to keep their guard. If they let their guard down, if they let that Neptune energy get get too diffused and too scattered, then that could bring some potential problems. So that's those are the long-term transits. Overall, it looks really good for Ukraine. I mean, it looks <laughs> not so good for Putin and really, really no. good for Ukraine. Um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that they, what I'm understanding is they, they have a, a good governmental system. So Zelensky doesn't, I think, just make decisions based on his own. I think he really goes to his peers, his cabinet. And I think that'll help diffuse or kind of ameliorate some of that, you know, confusing energy of, or that overconfident energy. Mm -hmm. I think they're they're uniquely situated to sort of make the best of that. I is what I would say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I I definitely think so. Um, and they have so many trine aspects, which shows so much support. That's like the overriding energy, right? That's, yeah, that's yeah. going to be going on in the long term. Right. Okay. That's that's fascinating. I think this stuff is so fascinating, and I love the way you've put it together. It's very succinct very clear and and I, it paints a picture that I can see so I appreciate that so Thank are, you. are we going to 45 now sure sure all yep. right <laughs> I need really good news here Adam I'm counting on you okay so <laughs> so with with Donald Trump um we have a bit of a mixed bag going on here and we see this a lot with Donald Trump in his astrological birth chart, he has a strong 10th house. The 10th house is all, uh, all about the public persona. He has his sun sign there, which stands for his uh, ego structure. He has his north node there, which stands for his karmic direction. And he has Uranus there, which stands for instability. They're all sitting right next yeah. to each other in plain sight. Because the 10th house is all plain sight. So... This basically is he his his sole purpose is basically to be a public figure and and a collective figure to lead basically to lead change to lead chaos right so we can eventually put it back together in order to move us forward so Trump really represents that chaos so his his transits reflect a real mixed bag here. And we've really seen this a lot as well. Um, so what's going on right now with, with, with him is first off the planet Mars, which represents someone's energy. It's sitting right next to Uranus. Um, so Mars is energy. Mars is warlike. Um, Uranus is volatile and unstable. So what we are seeing with here is we're seeing um, fits of rage, right? We're seeing, um, a lot of instability. Whenever Mars teams up with Uranus, it could be um, just unpredictable, unreliable, um, and 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 just like you you really like don't want to be around that energy. So that's one aspect that's going on right now. He has his sun sign, which is sitting right next to the planet Neptune. So in his astrology chart, he has Neptune in what's called a retrograde aspect. Neptune and retrograde can go two ways. It can bring us 
uh, into higher spiritual heights, but it can bring us deeper into the well of delusion and illusion. That's really what's going on with Trump right now. Yeah, He's got a real it. delusional Neptune. His sun sign, which is his ego structure, the sun sign, which is the ego structure, it's sitting right there. So it's it's heightening his delusions of grandeur, you know? So he, so he's, he's, you know, he's sitting up there. He's verbally spitting things out left and right, unpredictable. He's got this king complex um, and he's totally delusional about it. He probably still thinks he's president. I mean, if, you know, if we've heard this guy talk recently, he is, he's truly gone mad. And I think he's been mad for a while, but, but um, he just keeps, keeps spiraling like further and further. I mean, he, he, he really is clinically insane. Um, <laughs> Call it like it is, Adam, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. He's, he, he's clinically insane. Um, and then <laughs> the last aspect you guys hear for short term is the planet Mars, which represents that, that, volatile energy it's sitting right next to his north node as well so um he has mars uranus north node so in the short term we're just gonna see more spitting out more 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 volatile if you sort of uh imagine like um some sort of like little dragon or something that just kind of spits things out randomly very volatile not really saying anything of real value, but more acting out of impulse. So that's pretty much what we're seeing in the short term. The long term transits are kind of are are pretty interesting for him. The planet Pluto, which represents power um, and power struggles, is going to be sitting in an oppositional aspect to Venus, which stands for relationships and finances. So whenever it's in an oppositional aspect in relation to one another, we can see that, that um, he is going, going to be going through a period, uh, some transformational um, events as far as finances and reputation and friends. Um, this could indicate power plays with Pluto. Um, also, you know, death of old ideas, more stuff coming up. Pluto, you know, Pluto is, really has a lot to do with the evolution of the soul purging right we're gonna see we're gonna see like a further energetic purging um you know this this could be an, an, an another lawsuit right I, I don't know like if trump's like in in a big debt i haven't followed very closely like his financial situations mm -hmm. but but there's gonna be some transformation along with um what he calls are his allies and what he calls are his what he calls his financial situation. So the next aspect is going to be the planet Nep his uh, Neptune, which represents um, illusion, con confusion. It's going to be sitting in a harmonious aspect to Saturn, and this is so interesting because um, Saturn is really all about. Um, discipline and foundation and when it's a harmonious aspect to neptune it it idealizes um oneself so he he really he's going to be in in the long term aspect he's he's going to be um really thinking he's on top he's he's going to be like maybe watching old videos of himself and still oh thinking Lord. he's the president he, you know he's gonna want to whenever neptune's in a trine aspect it's like these these illusions of grandeur come up these Ooh. these fantasies these ideals and and in his mind he's he's really gonna be just like this is who i am this is what i am this is who i am i'm amazing <laughs> i'm on top of the world he's he's gonna be like just kind of spinning off on that aspect as long as uh, he's watching all that and thinking all that from a padded room i'm i'm happy i'm good with it yeah yeah but what's what's interesting though is that his base you know his base as represented by um, the planets Jupiter and Saturn, because those are the, the planets that represent the social sphere. Ju Jupiter and Saturn are going to be in a trine aspect. So Ooh. he's still going to have his base. Ooh. He's, it, yes, he's still, I, I, I don't see in the long-term transits, which are up to the next six months. I honestly, I, I'm still seeing a base for this man in the next six months. I mean, I, I really, 
I really hate to say it, but I'm just going on by what I'm seeing here. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. And the la his last transit is the planet Neptune, uh, which re represents that foggy energy when it's in a square aspect to his moon, which is which which is his emotions. A Neptune square moon um, indicates more more delusions. Um, How? How much more delusional can can he get? <laughs> he. Th this also too this because neptune and the moon are more inward this can also represent like night terrors and oh. ghosts from the pasts like like at, at night literally like like going like literally like going mad like like during the night time um okay yeah so so he may be spinning off more and more at night like unconscious fears right ghosts from the past his old karma things just coming up, up and him literally like we're seeing i'm seeing like sleepless nights here with him um deep into the realm of of the like like the negative like astral realms Ooh, um, wow. yeah because wow. it's all the negativity he's put out you know and all the delusions you know the the the, the universe is a wise place right whether or not we we want to believe it. It is a wise place, right? And karma is a real thing. Um, someone can say they don't have a conscience, but no matter how sh how much of a horrible person you are, it it's just ingrained in in who we are, right? So so all this stuff comes up at night, you know, all these fears, all this negativities, and a Neptune square moon is definitely uh, can can indicate like lunar lunar terrors. Oh wow, wow. Yeah. So I mean, that's something we would never here in public right this is kind of going on behind the scenes right. like what's going on on like like the the personal and in interior level right yeah right so, so those are his long-term transits wow that's fascinating i <laughs> i so what i re very rudimentally understand about jupiter is that expansion right so you were talking about his base or his followers next mm -hmm. to Jupiter means an expansion of mm -hmm. that, a, a potential. I mean, of, of course, right. I mean, energy sometimes manifests in ways that we don't understand or we don't think it's going to, um, yeah. but it certainly suggests that, that his followers will be active or mm -hmm. even activated um, mm -hmm. in the next six months. Yeah, I so feel like yeah. it's with or without him. I almost feel like he's activated them and they're sort of out doing their thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, the that that Saturn trying Jupiter indicates um continual support. Continual. Trines are supportive. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm trying to be good and not ask you, is there a transit that would show us that he <laughs> then he crosses over. I'm trying um, to be good. Well, well, well yeah, you know <laughs> what I'm what I'm really seeing here is with that that last aspect is that that Neptune square moon. Um, to me, that indicates that that on on like an emotional level and psychic level, he's already kind of in like a, a like a hell realm. Mm -hmm. Um. Right. And and that and that honestly, like because because we are physical beings of consciousness, that um that he kind of like is kind of sort of in a hellish state. So that's um, a punishment. I mean, that is an a um a karmic yeah. a karmic uh payback sort of. Yeah, he's you know, and it, it's you know, it's interesting in this world we're all just like we can't wait for them to die. We can't wait for them to die. You know, but. But as far as my understanding is, um, you know, as, and as far as like a lot of those, those wisdom teachings, right? Supposedly death is basically just a period at the end of a sentence. And you just kind of are pretty much the same soul and, 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 and the same energy. So he's who he is now, you know, he's carrying around this super intense energy. Um, he's already in a hell state as, as far as my understanding. So maybe this gives him an opportunity to bear witness to that and to 
have that, have some sort of change of heart, even if it's never spoken, maybe he'll have some sort of um, compassion or guilt or understanding of, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think yeah. So. I, I, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it might take, Sorry. you know, the, the evolution of his soul, you know, that's going to be, you know, that's going to be up to him and, and definitely forces, you know, out, outside of our own personal control. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, it's, I have a hard time seeing how someone like that could really um, spiral like further down, but I mean, I guess you can. You know? <laughs> well, I kind of wonder if this night, what I'm hearing is like a night psychosis, right? I'm, yeah. I, I'm wondering yeah. if this night psychosis could concern his caretakers enough and him enough that, that, you know, people have asked if he's going to use insanity as a plea, right. To uh, at the last minute when, when it's all but certain that he's going to be doing some sort of jail time, whether it, it really is presidential jail. Um, if he could use that, plea of insanity to have a lesser sentence or to have a more luxurious uh surroundings mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah you know there's um if if things get like desperate enough for him um i can definitely see that happening that would probably be like his last resort yeah Right. Because his ego, because you talked about he came into this world to be a change agent, to have an ego, to be a public figure. And that uh -huh. would that would definitely not be the right outcome. Right. For him to say, I'm really just in in instable or unstable and, you know, with my sanity. OK, interesting. Well, I have to say also that I I have compassion for him. I really don't want anybody to go through uh psycho psychotic hell. Um mm -hmm. and and uh you know I, I really do have compassion for him in that way. Um mm -hmm. okay so wow thank you for that uh wrap up and you know we didn't talk about this before but as you were talking I thought to ask you um mm -hmm if you might come back and do a video where you talk about Biden and sure. Garland and I don't know, Harris, uh, three other people. Sure. I would like to know what their short-term and long-term transits are. I think sure. that would be very fascinating to understand what's happening with Biden, what's happening with Garland and one other person. And I, I don't know if that's Kamala Harris or if that's, um, you know, somebody else, but I definitely want to know what Biden and Garland are up to. So maybe we'll do this again, but, but sure. before we, we do that, you wanted to help us <laughs> with uh, these six planets that are in retrograde um, and how, how that's <laughs> affecting us personally. <laughs> I know. Right. Right. Um, now, of course, yeah. if you guys want to know how it's affecting you personally, you should get a reading because these are going to be broad strokes that he's talking about today. Mm -hmm. But truth is that these planets could really everything you just heard him talk about with the short term and the long term uh, transits with those three figures are also happening in your life. And wouldn't you want to know, right, if I'm going through a time where maybe I need to use a little bit more discernment because potential, the potential for confusion is greater. So think about getting your own chart done and it, it could be helpful for you. Um, it has been helpful for me. I know that. Um, so let's talk about these, these planets mm -hmm. that are in retrograde. Yeah. So yeah, there's, there's currently six planets in retrograde. So Mercury is in retrograde right now. The good news is though that in, um, a couple of short weeks, it'll be out. A couple of short weeks. Yeah. So Mercury he does not know what he's talking about. You guys, weeks, weeks, we have weeks. Okay, go ahead. Mercury retrograde is approximately three weeks. Um, however, though, it, it started a little while back. Um, there's a little bit of a shadow period, um, approximately a, a, around a week. What does that uh, mean, a shadow period? A, 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 a shadow period is when the planet... Um, kind of stays at like a standstill and so 
Um, and and so then then it, it's not in like seemingly like reverse motion anymore, but things are a little more like kind of an energetic standstill. So the next couple of weeks, it's just going to be good to be patient around anything having to do with technology or communications. Um, if, if something frazzles out, technologically speaking, um, try to try to use your intuition to just kind of roll with it rather than fight against it. Um, because Mercury in retrograde um, is, is really all about um, communication and technological errors um, that can occur. If those are occurring in your life with someone, um, try to use your higher mind, right? Um, and instead of fighting against it, know that if you are supposed to make those connections with those people, then it will happen when Mercury goes direct. It just was not supposed to happen during that Mercury retrograde period, which which is fine. I know we it's and it's hard for us nowadays because we live in this world of like, go, 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 go. Um, however, though, um, that energy can also be destructive. Right. And and it, it could also lead us to, you know, things like frustration and and anger and all those negative emotions that um, that really um, impact ourselves and the collective in an in a negative way. So definitely try to avoid that. The next planet is, that's retrograde is Jupiter. So Jupiter is all about our morals and our philosophies. Whenever it's in a, a retrograde aspect, um, this planet is asking us to go inward and to look where we stand as far as our moral compass and as far as our values um, and as far as our belief systems, our faith, our spirituality, our religion, whatever it is. The planet Neptune is also in retrograde. And I know, Susan, when we, uh, when we sent emails back and forth, um, you mentioned this, this fog uh, that, you know, that, that as, as, as a collective, uh, we, are, we are kind of going through. And Neptune, re Neptune has more to do with the collective. So a Neptune in retrograde can indicate a lack of clarity about our, our future, a lack of direction, it can sometimes too feel as if we are just sort of spinning our wheels kind of in messy curly Q circles and not really going anywhere. However, the thing is we are going, we actually are going somewhere, but that energy, it spins kind of curly Q, curly Q, um, messy energy, but that's actually how it evolves. It's not very linear. It's very non-linear. So it seems like we're not moving ahead with, with the Neptune retrograde. We are. It's just in the most non-linear fashion, if that makes sense. The next aspect is the planet Saturn in retrograde. Uh, Saturn represents the Lord of Karma. So we are really seeing this as far as like um, the, the, the social sphere. Um, as far as uh, like, for example, like what we've seen with Donald Trump, as far as him getting slapped, you know, the 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 other day. Um, so Saturn and retrograde is all about reviewing, reviewing what went on in the past and a karmic rebalancing. Oh, Pluto I like in, that. I like yeah, that. Yeah. So Pluto is in retrograde. That's all about Pluto is all about the power dynamics, the power plays, the power structures. Um so this is reviewing power dynamics, the just the 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 peer review of anything associated with um, giving power to others, powers of nations, and and personal power, um, where you stand with yourself in relation to your own personal power. And the last uh, the last uh, retrograde planet is the planet Uranus, and Uranus. When it's in retrograde, um, it makes us extremely inventive and extremely brilliant with new and unusual ideas. However, um, we can have a hard time expressing those due to the inward nature. So if, if you have any intuition about things, any insights, any things you really want to know, um, right now is kind of a great time to maybe go off into nature, to journal, to meditate, um, to treat your body well, you know, as, as far as good nutrition, good sleep, all of these things help, um, you know, center and, and center and balance our body so we can get a clear insight and clear direction and move forward uh, in our lives in a more harmonious way.
Fantastic. So that last thing you talked Mm -hmm. about, it seems like so intuitively we're getting these brilliant ideas, right? But they're sort of locked. They're sort of locked in our in our intuitive center. So you gave great advice about how do we unlock our intuition, go to nature, ground yourself, meditate, you know, meditation allows you to connect to that subconscious where all of those brilliant ideas are and then you can bring them out and journaling is such a great idea too and then mm-hmm. i want to say i'm trying to form a sentence <laughs> i can't believe i said that um i'm trying to form a thought into a sentence so um the lord of karma with um being retrograde. So something that I do like about Mercury retrograde that I discovered is that I go back and get projects done that I haven't gotten done. So like it's just been languishing. So this whole background is a new thing. It's something I'm reworking uh, how I do my video recordings. And (laughs) and, and you just said, follow your intuition. Like I have this laptop I'm talking on now, literally the I button on the keyboard does not work. Do you know how many words have the letter I in them? A lot. So anyway, uh-huh. I just got this intuition, brilliant idea to get, and and it seems obvious maybe to a whole lot of you, but to just get a, a Bluetooth keyboard, right? Um, just use an op, a separate keyboard, but it just happened today. Now, let me mm-hmm. talk to you about the uh, Lord of Karma and getting to redo things. I'm so excited you said that because with 45, we're going to get a chance to go back and review, get a chance to go back and potentially maybe even indict him. Um, Mm -hmm. Whatever Mm -hmm. opportunities we missed, Mm -hmm. now we get a chance. And I love that it's in Saturn, which is the Lord of Karma. You guys, Mm -hmm. This gives us how how long do we have, Adam? <laughs> how long is Saturn in in retrograde? So Saturn is going to be in retrograde in for the next couple months. You guys, we're golden. Okay, we're mm-hmm. golden. Mm-hmm. You watched to the end of the video. This is the best news yet. Mm-hmm. This gives us a chance to go back and look at those tax returns, which now you know he's going to have to make public. It, all these things, I feel like this gives garland a chance to go back and do what he couldn't do before Mm -hmm. yep yep and um you know and it's it's great you bring that up too because saturn is also has also been in the astrological sign of aquarius and aquarius is um is that energy that brings truth and brings light to situations um it's all about fairness it's all about humanitarian ideals so um, that's the the archetypal energy that's right now that's going on in Saturn. It's perfect. Uh huh. It's really perfect. It's it's. I think we're going to wrap this up during the Saturn retrograde, and if we do, I'll try not to talk bad about retrograde ever again. <laughs> right. Well, I well if it, okay, you take the word retrograde at the beginning is the R E. So so R E is renew redefine restructure but with that can also be replenish yeah you know resource resourcefulness so all there, in you how know. you look at it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. re reindict recharge uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh boy fantastic does that wrap up our planets in retrograde adam yep Fantastic. So I hope you come back. I'm really excited now that I, I, I honestly kind of helped me understand these transits a lot better. And now I'm interested to see also how they work in my own personal chart. Um, But I'm really interested to see how they're going to work with Garland um, Mm -hmm. and um, Biden. And maybe you'll come up with somebody else that you find that might be interesting to talk about. So Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. I hope you guys will check out his channel. Um, let me see. I'm going to let you say it so I don't get it wrong. Yeah. So everybody, my YouTube channel is Adam Stargazing Astrology. And please subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. And I'm currently offering discounted astrological readings of all type 
for yourself or for someone else, if you're at any sort of crossroads, if there are any um, traumatic events that have happened in the past, and you need clarification and healing with those or anything that may happen in the future, I can also give you um, insight of, about that as well. So um, please send me an email. Um, and the email will also be in the description box of this video. It sure will. And so will his channel again. Thank you so <laughs> much, Adam. This has been you illuminating, um, inspiring, and educational. You are welcome, Susan. And thanks so much for having me on. And I definitely look forward to a, a future collaboration soon. Awesome. We'll let you guys know. We'll Maybe I'll put up a, um, this is recorded. We usually do it recorded, but I'll try to give you a heads up, but you'll, you'll see it. You'll see it. Mm -hmm. Thanks everybody for joining us. We really appreciate it. Much thanks. love. Take good care.